Everyone is using ChatGPT, but most people still don't know how powerful a tool it really is. There's so much more you can do with it than just asking it basic questions or getting it to summarize your documents. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you some of the craziest things that ChatGPT can do that I bet you didn't actually know about. Let me know in the comments down below how many features you didn't know even existed today. And let's get started with number one, which is new and it's called tasks. So the tasks feature can be selected by using the model drop down button, and then you just select GPT with tasks. You can also select any existing tasks you've scheduled by going to your profile and then clicking on the tasks button. Tasks allows you to schedule basic automations within ChatGPT. So to do this, we can type in something like, remind me of the latest news at the same time every single day. And what ChatGPT will then ask is to set up the automation sequence. So this might be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or at any custom interval you want and specify a time. It will then run that particular command at the same time every day and send you an email reminding you about it. So in this example, I've asked it to give me a news update at the same time every day. And then I get an email, click on the button in the email, and it brings me back into ChatGPT with that prompt that's been run, showing me the latest news using GPT search. Now, this is just the first step from OpenAI in building out a full agent facing automation side of ChatGPT, which I'm guessing you'll be able to integrate with things like custom GPTs to automate your entire life. But at the moment, you can do quite a lot of practical things like reminding you about a learning session at the same time every week or reminding you to do your shopping again at the same time every week or every day. It's a small step but it's going to be really interesting to see how this progresses over time. Next up we've got projects and this is one of the most in-demand features for ChatGPT. It might sound quite simple first but it's actually hugely powerful. To use projects you just go over to the history bar on the left hand side and then you click on the little plus button to start a new project. Immediately a modal window will pop up asking you to enter a name for your project and then allowing you to enter any custom knowledge training data into that particular project. So for example, if I was writing my YouTube scripts in ChatGPT, I could train it on my voice and explain that it's an expert in writing YouTube scripts. It then means that every time I start a new chat within this project, it's going to use that training data and that prompt command. Now this does a couple of things. Firstly, it allows us just to organize our chat history a little bit better. Previously, you might have to search through loads and loads of chats to find find the previous prompt that you used in order to then reuse it or copy information from it or share it with someone else. With projects and this folder structure, you've now got all of your chats that are similar in a single folder, making finding that chat so much easier. It also means that if you've got quite distinct projects that you're working on, so for example, one might be around social media and creating blogs and doing things online, and the other might be for a formal work project, you can have those completely separate and trained on different data and customized to sound in the conversation conversation very differently. This is really helpful if you want to quickly jump into a chat and not have to train a custom GPT for every new project. And it's also a great way to organize your thoughts and collect them all together. Next on the list, we've got Search GPT. Now this was integrated a little while ago, but it allows OpenAI's chat GPT to connect up to real-time data for things like news, events, and the latest information to use within its models. Now Search GPT is accessible by clicking on the little tools button here and then selecting search or just by entering search into your prompt as you're typing it out. This will then search the web. Now, okay, this is obvious and it's there in the interface. However, what you might not know is that it pulls out all of the source information in the chat window for you to click on and to verify its validity. It will also produce a summary of this information in a kind of references area at the bottom of the chat for you to click on and then look at the articles that have been referenced. Now, this is super powerful if you're looking at research for things like an article or a blog post where you wanna make sure that the source is a valid source and if you want to dive into it in more detail or pull out more information from that particular source, like for example, a Wikipedia page or a news article from somewhere like CNN or something like that, you can do so and update it really, really quickly. The search function is particularly helpful if you want to update yourself on the latest news on a particular topic or if you're looking to update some existing blog posts or articles you've written with the latest information out there. It saves you a ton of time and you no longer have to worry about ChatGPT's training history being the limit of what's output by the model. Next on the list is something that lots of people overlook because they think it might be a little bit too complicated, but it's actually hugely powerful. And it's OpenAI's Playground. This is accessible at playground.openai.com. And it looks a little bit like ChatGPT, but this is actually the entry point to the API and all of OpenAI's documentation on how to use its models. In here, you'll find a similar interface to ChatGPT with a few additions. You can jump into assistance, you can jump into the voice tool, and you can jump into the real-time conversation 
conversation tool too. On the right hand side, you've also got the ability to change some of the more intricate parameters around the model, like its ability to produce consistent responses every time and the amount of variation it produces for similar types of messages. Here, you can build out more advanced GPTs in the assistance tab using some of the more advanced tools like the knowledge search tool. And because this is coming from the API, you can actually test out a lot of different scenarios here before using the API for more complicated things by connecting it up to other systems through their own APIs. Now, the OpenAI Playground is something that my team uses all the time when we're creating our own custom AI roleplay avatars. And it's the best way to experiment within OpenAI's Playground with some of the latest API tools, which aren't available or accessible in ChatGPT. Now, next on the list and sticking with Playground for a second, is OpenAI's API itself. If you go into the Playground area and click on the settings icon, this is where you can extract your OpenAI API key from. This means you can then plug OpenAI and your OpenAI account into another tool. Now, this is particularly helpful if you want to use OpenAI for automation. You can use platforms like Zapier or Make.com to add in your own OpenAI API key, and then you're charged on credits within your account to set up workflow automations. So for example, you could have something like a document is uploaded to Zapier, and then it's summarized by the OpenAI API before having an email sent to you with that summary. Now, this is just a small example of what's possible with automation, and I'll be jumping into this in a future video. But safe to say, you can set up everything from sales automation to creating blog posts in bulk, and it all comes from OpenAI's API key, which is hidden away in this part of the platform, and it takes you way beyond what's available in chat GPT. Now next on the list, and if API automation is a little bit too much for you, then a great place to get started is with custom GPTs. A lot of people skip over this, but since its launch last year, the GP store is hugely powerful and it's filled with tons and tons of great GPTs and automation sequences that other people have built that you can utilize. So whether it's writing a YouTube script, learning a new language, or improving your productivity, there's a GPT out there that can help you. It's also a great place to start if you want some inspiration for your own custom GPT. For example, if I want to create my own custom GPT that is a workout planner, I might have a look through some of the workout planners that are on the GPT store first, test them out, see how good they are, get a bit of a feel for what the prompts might be behind the scenes before jumping into the GPT creator and conversationally asking for a better version myself that I can create and train off some of my own documents. This is hugely powerful and people are already using this together with some of the tools in the GPT creator to connect this up to external APIs and solve some of their problems repetitively. For me, I've created GPTs that quickly create blog articles in my own tone of voice and will also create announcements for my company in the company's brand tone of voice at just the click of a button. The limit is really just your imagination here and it's definitely worth diving into. Now, next on our list is Sora, OpenAI's video model, which has been integrated into ChatGPT in certain regions. Sora is absolutely amazing. And while it might not hold up to some of the latest video models like Kling AI, which is my personal preference, it's really interesting having it in integrated into ChatGPT and allowing you to create videos conversationally. Here are a couple of examples of things that people have created using Sora. And because it's only available in certain countries at the moment, not everyone has actually used it or had a good play around with it. This is only going to get better and more integrated into ChatGPT and the wider OpenAI platform. And in the future, I suspect we'll be seeing lots of amazing video creations for everything from e-learning to people actually creating marketing videos that convert online. To access Sora provided you're in a region with it, all you need to do is click on the Sora button and then you're taken over to the Sora interface where you can conversationally create an AI generated video with anything in it that you like. Now, as one bonus thing that I don't want you to miss in ChatGPT, I wanna just touch on the coding side of ChatGPT that a lot of people often overlook. If we jump into ChatGPT with Canvas, there have been a lot of coding updates added into what you can do here. So for example, if I ask ChatGPT to create a Flappy Bird style game in the Canvas interface, it will generate all of the code in the language that I specify. But what you can actually do now is you can use some of the quick launch buttons on the bottom right here, debug the code to clean it up, to optimize it. And you can even extract it and play it in your own command window to test if it works or not. Just like Anthropic and Claude, where you can preview the actual code in real time in the chat interface, I suspect this is coming from OpenAI too, so that they're not left behind. But this is a really fun way to immediately play and see the benefits of your code in real time, and then conversationally tweak and edit it if it's not quite doing what you want. I've spent hours and hours creating everything from role play games in here to things like UI interfaces for my latest startups. And it's a really great way to quickly iterate in this closed environment, even if you're not a developer yourself. It's definitely worth jumping into and having a play around with. Okay, so that was seven crazy things ChatGPT can do that you might not have known about. Let me
me know in the comments below which you've never heard of before and which you're trying out right now. I've got another great video looking at some of the top mistakes that people make with ChatGPT so that you can become a ChatGPT expert and boost your productivity that'll pop up over here. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing and I'll catch you again in the next video. See ya.